um, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're really excited you're here. We're not so excited to share mm -hmm. with you that our guest today has come down with COVID. So we're going to have to reschedule him. I met him, uh, Wendy, at an event that I was speaking mm. at, um, and he was just fascinating. And so I said boldly, I'm going to be your new best friend and put you on the, <laughs> the nonprofit show. And he's like, wow, okay. And so um, really interesting, interesting man. He runs an organization that is one of the um, leaders in the nation for HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. um, protocol testing. And he's just so interesting and really doing amazing things. So we'll get him back um, and, and we wish him our, our best and, and to get healthy. Speedy recovery. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But we have one of the best with us and that is Wendy F. Adams, CFRE, Cultivate for Good, coming to us from Florida today. Florida today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's steamy. I'm here. <laughs> I can't imagine, but bless your heart. Good for you for stepping up and, and looking crisp and fresh and not wilty. And yeah, uh, because it's pretty intense. Yesterday we had Meredith Tarion on also from Florida and uh, we got into a hilarious conversation in the green room chatter about shark's teeth. And lo and behold, which you can find on the beach. Yes. Which I never knew. I never knew about. Yes. And so um, we've had people send us pictures in of shark teeth. And so we are very thankful for that. Um, and so if you have any shark teeth laying around and you want to send them to the nonprofit show, um, we're collecting. We're collecting. And one of the comments was, well, you know, they're black. And I'm like, a teeth, teeth are black. And, and she was like, well, they're fossilized. And yeah. so the picture that I got yesterday, they were like coal black. And I thought to myself, you know, Wendy, if I was walking on the beach, um, I don't think I would intellectualize it. I would, I would, I don't know what I, I would just think, go walk right past him. I don't know. And, and now you won't. Yeah. And some of them were kind of sizable. So yes. Anyway, this is the nonprofit show. You're not watching Animal Planet. We are going to have a conversation. But you learn so much. So that's what we promise. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, Wendy, given that you are the guru of so many things and you come to us from a different part of the country where you get to observe different behaviors and, and different issues. Um, I thought it might be an interesting conversation mm. to kind of talk to you about what you are seeing moving forward through the summer and dare I say fall, it's given here. what things were looking like this time last year. We were still concerned about COVID. We were still concerned about gathering um, doing hybridized things, canceling events. What are you seeing? I'm seeing hope and embracing. I really am. I really am. We have found a way. We don't ever want to go back to where we were. And so what, I, what yeah. I'm seeing is there's an openness to how someone may feel about being in a gathering. And so how they may need to come into that space. We're not going to make that be the issue. We're not going to have that be the conversation. We're just happy we're together. So the fact that events that hadn't been and had not come back into space, and now they are, and dare I say growing, it makes me think of the Cultivate Conference at National University. Just those numbers, there was a waiting list. People yeah, and it's out like that. Exactly. And so that is a picture of where I see the sector. Um, we are of the people and we want to be together. So, yeah, it's so interesting. Is this something that with your clients and when you're out and about people are articulating this or that is it's just like a general sense or is there different vocabulary that you're hearing about this? Like now well, that it's over, what do you I mean? What does that look like to you? 
we're so I'm hearing it, but you're really just seeing it. You know, people will speak it out if you're in a more intimate couple folks together, but you're just seeing it. Themes are coming where it might have been one or two that were sent. You're seeing teams come together because I think we all love the freedom of virtual, mm-hmm. but we miss the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. I'm going to date myself, the water cooler com- that I just passed yeah. by and happened, right? So we're missing that. And now if we have an opportunity to be together, hey, it's great. We, we can do hybrid work, but let's be meaningful in those times that we're together. So you're seeing it more than you're hearing it as far as verbalized, but, but certainly the conversations there. You know, it's so interesting that you would say that I'm giving up a presentation on Friday uh, to a community group and um, at about 75 people. So somewhat of a smaller group. And these are folks who they know one another, but I don't think they've been together. Right. Yes. And, yeah. And so I purposefully, and I mean, it's either going to be a win or a, a lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I purposefully retweaked my presentation to have more time for the individuals there to work together because yeah. my sense of it is, is that they're going to be like, oh, and then they're going to want to chat. That's right. That's right. The dial, the, the days of where you're really having to pull conversation. Nope. Nope. You're having to bring them back. Hey, we got to get going. We got to get started. And so I think that's, that is a real picture of what we're talking about here. And frankly, Part of the reason, and we can, we're not going to go down, why did that happen? But what did we garner from? And what are we going to take forward and, and make a change? And so that's what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing it across generation. I'm seeing it across personality styles, you know, as far as our, our, our introverts, like, yeah, that was great. Mm, I, I really do want to spend time with. And so all it, it really is a, a space that's brought us together, brought us more together. And uh, I think that's what it's about. I, I love to see what we've been talking about. Now we're walking out in such a tangible way, especially when we look and we go four years later or what you said, like even a year ago, as we are coming on to the fall season, yeah. we weren't here. We still weren't in the space that we are now. And so, yeah, it's it's good. It's good. So let me ask you this. Should we, as we're looking at planning summer events and that, and that fall events, should we be um, padding or buffering or just plain flat out organizing social time as opposed to get to your table, sit down, shut up, and we're going to hammer you with information from videos to testimonials. I mean, what's your sense of this? You you said it. If you don't plan for it, it's going to push your agenda out. It's going, so you might, you might as well. I think it, it now becomes a part of the program because we know how important it is when we didn't have it and what was lost. So I think anything that we're looking at in that sense has to have it built in. It's actually going to make the program more robust. It's going to make the conversation and the points that are being brought, who's speaking, and it's just going to bring a richer sense. So it just, yeah, we need to do it. So let's say you're planning a, a community breakfast or community lunch. What would that look like to you? Would you have exercises on the table to talk about your, let's say you're serving a library system and, you know, you offer what, tell everybody what your favorite book was, or, I mean, yeah, things like that, or because we have not done this. I mean, I've been on the rubber chicken circuit since I was born. Right. And you go and there's a cadence and you get the 30 minutes before the ballroom doors open. You get in, you sit down, you look at the stage, maybe the screen. You can, you can close your eyes and go through the event. <laughs> Truly, right? That's where we were. I, I know what's going to happen next. I was involved with an event where we turned it on its head. It was an, e- it was a, an evening event. We purposely didn't call it a gala. It was our impact event. So we're going to change the language. Mm-hmm. And we served breakfast for dinner. Really? And let me tell who doesn't love that, right? We talk about it, we do it, we brought it into the space. Now I know that there were those, and we heard some feedback. Ah, just do the chicken. Yeah. 
Well, the amount, it, 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 the organization served vulnerable children and family. What do kids love? Breakfast. And so we, we incorporated the meal in, but yeah, it flipped it on its head, but it had conversation around the table. I think it, that translates into, yes, let's have activities. We had Legos on the table. Let's bring the conversation through everything that we're doing and not just the four points and, and, and you know, the, the presentation itself. So I am seeing that. I'm loving it. I'm encouraging it. I'm speaking that out to my clients that it's time to step away from the rubber chicken, but just that whole mentality of, we don't want people to walk through with their eyes closed. We want them to have to, what's that? So they don't miss anything. Yeah. So when I love your, I love your story and I, I, I'm right there with you. My first word that I associate with when you just were sharing that story is creativity. That's right. And risk. That's right. A yeah. Word, risk. I, I, mean, I got to ask when this concept was floated and it has a great link, children, vulnerable families, breakfast. I mean, you know, teachers say all the time, if the kids come to school hungry, the day is lost. They cannot learn. That's it. So I, I love this concept. What internally was the conversation Were people like, did they have to be, you know, pushed on this or because it's risky. It is risky. There was some push. And let me tell you, my team and I, we decided and were able to pull off keeping it quiet for a long time. So, oh. yes, yes. So it was part of the reveal. We had different components. So there was risk all the way through. I and our, my team, we put it out there that we weren't going to have this be a part of the open conversation. Uh, and so that in and of itself put some leaders, board members, a little on edge. But when it all came down to it, wow, especially for those of us who, or those who were attending who didn't know the organization, mm -hmm. it was a great opening for, wow, I didn't expect. And it kept them engaged through the night because they really didn't know what was coming next. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there was push. And like I said, on the other end in the survey, there were some who were like, eh, the chicken would just be fine. Um, but <laughs> eh, you know what? We're not looking just for fine. Let's think about the organizations and the missions. Again, you've heard me say this before, Julia, like these are extraordinary, God-sized, huge goals. We can't come with the same old, same old. And that's for everything that we're doing. So the Cultivate Conference, we played rock, paper, scissors. Our keynote had us all get up and celebrate one another through that. I don't know when's the last time I played that game, but I remember it. Yeah. So now let me take this to the next level of, of questioning. And that is, mm. since you did this and it was successful mm -hmm. and it was vibrant and risky, does that give everybody comfort or permission to do something like their next event? in a, in a unique way, or do you think they'll it, go back to the standard? I think that there are those who are going to go back to what's comfortable mm -hmm. and, and are going to be pushed that way because well, is, does that affect the dollars raised? Well, I'll tell you, it didn't, it didn't negatively. Mm -hmm. uh, we exceeded the goal. Uh, so I think it is giving, I love the word that you used permission. Mm -hmm. And that's someone's got to stand out, stand up and say, we can do this. Let's take that risk. Those that we're serving are taking a risk in trusting us. So let's walk that out with them. Let's walk that out and say, it's not going to be the same way. We're going to learn where we have to crop, um, course correct. That's always going to be, whether you serve the rubber chicken or not, you're going to need to look at that and to make those assessments. But I do think if we learned anything over these last four years is we can't do it the same way and Risk is inevitable. We know change is. Mm -hmm. Let's walk it out. Let's walk it out together. Wow. You know, you just said something super magical to me. And and that was, and I've never been, I've never heard it articulated this way. So bravo to you. Mm. But our clients take a risk by entrusting us or working with us. And yes. that just gave me chills. I mean, talk about a a, a lens correction, right? That's that every single one of us should be repeating that phrase 
when we're having discussions about our nonprofits because we we omit the purview of our client. All too, it's so easy to. It is. It is. It's easy to get into the, it's easy just to get into the work and the grind and, and forget. And again, we say this often, the why, and that's what drove that comment, right? What is the, what's the why, why we get up every morning and do what we're doing. It's because there are those who are trusting us. <laughs> we, we've, we've got to come alongside them in that space and say, there's a reason why you should, um, why you should come along and partner with us. And then that, conversation and that dialogue translates to our supporters perspective and those who've been with us tenured for years of why they should say yes for the first time or say yes for the 500th time right why do you continue it it's because we're going to take this risk together um and and so that's that's what i saw in that space and again i love that now back out from behind the desk of that one organization to be able to pour that into leaders who are like, yes, you can do it. Here's an example, but it's going to look different. No two are the same. We were talking, we were having conversation in the green room, right? People groups, it may look like we're going to the same location. They're individuals. And so let's make sure that we're having conversation and doing things in that unique way. So then let's move further into this because are these changes that we're um, looking at and embracing because of the pandemic and it's almost like we're all starting over um, or like what's the ecosystem of that? Because I, I, keep, I keep hearing people say, oh, well, it'll never be the same. And then about anything, right? And then yes. Oh, yes. we're back to normal. And then others are like, there's, this is, we're, we're developing a new normal. And I'm curious what you see, because those are two very distinct thought tracks, right? Going back or, or saying we have to go forward because there's no going back. What are you seeing in this? I don't know that I would say that I have a unique perspective, but I have a, a loud, bold perspective on prior to the pandemic, but as we were there before it hit, Mm -hmm. We were in that space where we were needing and looking for change. Any, it was necessary. We didn't want it that way. I don't think any of us would have written the story that way. But the where we were was not where we needed to stay. Mm -hmm. This forced, and we can think of things in our individual lives that have forced us out of those spaces. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's got to get really uncomfortable to say, oh, gosh, I can't just keep doing what I've always been doing. Yeah. And I, so my answer is we have to move forward. It's not about looking back and, and there are the, there are the best practices. There are the, the solid foundations. They're going to come with us, but no, it is a moving forward. And I'm seeing more of that again, back to the embrace being embraced by leaders. And the more, the, the more of us that can have that conversation in a non-antagonistic way, and open the dialogue for others to share, because it's going to look different, but that's just it. It's different. Um, and, I, and I'm excited to see that more conversations are being had in that, being had in that space. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's an interesting thing because it seems like these, you know, and I maintain there've been several pandemics. It's not just the global epidemic. Yeah. It's social unrest. It's political unrest. It's uh issues of civility and, mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm aging myself, <laughs> but manners and behavior and social norms on how we communicate and, and all that, oh, yes. um, the, the economy, I could go on. So I think there've been a whole bunch of things. Um, but I'm curious as to, do you feel people and in going into a general election, and this has certainly <laughs> been a tenuous time, do you feel people are kind of walking on eggshells and afraid to to say certain things. I mean, I can tell you, I mean, I'm out in public a lot, speaking, mm -hmm. working in my community, and I sense that they're self-editing. I, I know that I do. Um, what are you seeing in that space? Because it seems to me that you can tackle um, a nonprofit social, you know, construct, but it seems like the, the, the political sides can kind of filter into it and then 
we end up having more duress than we probably need. What are you seeing and how are you dealing with that? You spoke that out really well as far as the duress, right? I, I feel that that tension. And I hate that for the fact of why we do what we do and why we're here. Again, going back to who is the hero of the story, why, and who's asked us to come, allowed us to come into their space and they're being so brave. Let's not bring all this extra, but inevitably it weaves itself in. I can't say that I am unhappy with some of that self-editing. Now, that's out in public. That's not happening here. <laughs> that is still a place and a space that because I, you're not hearing me and I'm not right in front of you that I have gone wild and being able to, to there no editing. And we need a little more filter there. We always do. Uh, so I do see the in-person being pulled back as we get closer and closer to November. I mean, with each day, I don't even, we don't have to make a whole day. The, the narrative, right? That's out in front of us. I think those of us who have recognized we cannot engross ourselves in that conversation and have it just constantly being in our narrative, yeah. that's where you're seeing some more healthy conversations happening and being able to actually dialogue. Because when all you have is the soundtrack of whichever network, right. Is, right. Then, yeah. then it's no longer your views. Let's be frank. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's interesting. We had a guest on last week that was riveting and she uh, came from uh, Classy, the organization that does mm. um, you know, donor research and, and, and things of that nature, talking specifically about how a general election impacts uh, donors and, and how, you know, funders, I, I use the word funders because in the case of, of this context, you know, folks that have, you know, a, they're, they're super yes. donors, um, they're giving a lot of money, a lot of resources to, you know, different political narratives. And then ultimately that that is being stepped away from the nonprofit sector, right? And how yes. how should we be looking at this and 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 everything? And as opposed, it wasn't like a doom scroll conversation. It was it was very strategic and um, you know super super interesting, but it still is based in fear, right? Because you don't yeah. want you're afraid to say yes. something wrong to the potential donor. Yeah, I don't want to offend. I don't want you know. Yeah. And and so yeah, how how is that going to be perceived? And the, the tension in, in that space then takes away from, I mean, again, it's a season, it's a space that we're in, but when we have it become this dominant part of our conversation, then, it, then it's the guide. Yeah. And that's so unfortunate because frankly, I mean, we've got to be curious and ask those things. That's not, that's not what the supporter wants. You know, they have a passion here and here and yes, it, it's it's ebbing and flowing and shifting in the season that we're in, not just in their treasure, but where their time and talent are, right? They're giving of their time in that space. So what I learned over the year is having that dialogue. Let's not, in a way of, so I recognize the season that we're in, especially as you've come to know them. It's more as you're learning who, but if this is a longstanding, let's not, let's not step away from the hey, I know that you're going to be spending time here and here based on the season that we're in and, you know, want to be able to, to, to support you best in that. Even in so communication, should we move from email to this? And having that dialogue because I know you. Um, you've allowed me to be in that space. So I think it's those things um, in what we do know. Again, going back to that's a best practice. Don't walk away from that. Ask curiosity, you know, it, listen, active listening, and don't let that change the conversation or the way that you interact and engage because we have unsettling times. Um, so you know, that that's my, my thoughts on it. And I loved that you chose, and I'm assuming it was very deliberate. You use the word season because to me, when I hear season, it's transitory. We, mm -hmm. We're going to get through this. It's not forever, mm -hmm. right? That's right. And That's so right. I love that you said that because it, it almost has like a, an ending point. 
That's right. That's right. We, we, because the opposite of that says this never ends and it's hanging over and it's going to affect everything. Mm -hmm. And so really the, even the language, and you heard me say it earlier, what we call something, how we address, how we enter the room, it, it does affect the outcome. It really does. And, 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 and because it is a, it's a dialogue and not a monologue, right? We need to make sure that we're being very attentive um, and open to the fact of what's the other person actually hearing in that space? Am I, you know, and am I being quiet long enough to know? So. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. You know, I, every day I work uh, with you all, the, the amazing co-hosts that we have assembled and, you know, this has really been an honor and, and incredibly fortuitous because our co-hosts are all so dynamic and so different. Um, my personal opinion, and this is somewhat of a discovery, Wendy, is that because you all come from different parts of the country, mm -hmm. you have different sensitivities and you're seeing different things. Absolutely. And I love that for the nonprofit show. I just think it has really been uh, and continues to be magical and so really cool to get you on. I, I'm going to say we kind of put you in the hot seat today, um, last minute because our our guest was is a little under the weather, but we will get him back on because he's really somebody we need to to be hearing from doing um, great work yeah doing it yeah just really doing amazing things wendy f adams cfre cultivate for good um was supposed to be my co-host today but literally we just started peppering her with questions and, and talking about kind of where things are and where they're going and this is really an important part of how we lead and how we grow and how we steward our nonprofits. so um it was just such a wonderful time to be able to to get with you, Wendy. I really, really appreciate it. You know, another thing is we have tremendous gratitude and are proud of our presenting sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so that Wendy and I could have a conversation like we just have for the past 30 minutes. So, Wendy, thank you so much. So much fun. Uh, I love it. I like you said, love the co-hosts that we have in place and being able to do this together. It's what it's all about. It really is. It, re it truly, truly is. And I think that, you know, um, we need to be embracing these times of change and rediscovery and um, if I needed an example of that, your breakfast for dinner, that was just fabulous. And I love it. I love the attitude. And I, I think too, Wendy, and we'll, we'll close out shortly. I really appreciate the concept of risk that yes. you drew a link for me between the risk that a client takes engaging with an organization to the risk that an organization takes in their community and leading their community to that solution. Really powerful. And really. so that takes us to what we close out with, right? Every day. Yeah. You go. And that, that, that is how it all ties together, that we have to stay well mm -hmm. so that we can do well. 